welcome in today's lecture we are going to see the information system as an application of IT in the organizations you know in today's time the organizations are faced with a very complex environment the environment around any organization today is highly competitive things are highly uncertain so there is a requirement of understanding this business environment, the competition, and there is a requirement of taking very adequate and timely and proper decision. And so the organizations as were even working earlier, functioning earlier, but they were using the methods and techniques which are traditional in nature. But with those traditional methods, today's complex business environment is very difficult to be handled. And so there is a need for IT which can help the organizations in various fields of activity to be more efficient, to be more uh, cost effective and which enables the organization to achieve their objectives properly. So today's business environment is so competitive. In order to strive or thrive or to grow and to beat the competition, the organization needs to evolve, it has to change itself, it has to grow itself and it has to innovate also. That innovation is very very important uh, reason being that until now there is some creative thinking, a different way of thinking, the organizations cannot thrive, cannot really exist in today's uh, stiff competition. Thus the traditional methods of doing business as we were talking about earlier, it has been replaced today by the IT and in particular IT, we are using internet today for impl by implementing the network technology, networking technology and the World Wide Web today has become highly uh, popular and this has helped today the earlier traditional methods to be replaced by the modern methods where things are more efficient. These changes as we are talking about in the business environment has come basically in the area of computation and communication. And the computation means that processing things are to be done not manually but it can be done through the, by the use of computers and the communication which earlier was being done by other means today it's being done through the computer or through the IT or the networking methods and this has brought a, a revolution in the information as you understand information is one of the most important requirement for an organization to exist so the IT revolution has helped us to uh, create or get that information revolution which has helped the business organization to this business organization immensely. To have in a nutshell the idea about what kind of techniques that are being used today in business you can see that and these uh, techniques that we are talking about has increased the product productivity of the organization, the quality of the uh, products of the organization, there is uh, immense uh, benefit has been taken in this area and uh, the organization today are striving to make continuous improvement in their work. I mean uh, today no organization can think of being complacent by one way of doing a particular thing because uh, the, the competition is so tough you have to always create the differentiation and the differentiation is possible to be made by using different ways, by different, using different technologies and the processes to be changed and so many other things. So let us see uh, that what are the areas in which the techniques have been new, techniques have been used. Number one, the just-in-time inventory approach. As you know that an organization when you're uh, piling up inventory means that uh, the money is blocked so therefore no organization can afford to have excess inventory nor it can afford to have a less inventory that customers uh, demands are not, orders are not fulfilled. So there's a concept of just-in-time inventory which is possible by having proper collaboration and coordination and communication with the suppliers as well as the distributors so one can have a just-in-time inventory where IT has placed a very immense role because organizations are now connected with each other, they're integrated with each other and they can have the information about uh, both ways uh, with any other uh, partners. There's a concept of total quality management as you know that total quality management consists of the uh, principle that the quality is to be managed at every level of the uh, entire supply chain from right from the supplier to the end user the consumer uh, there is a requirement of at every each and every stage the process has to be uh, of a high high quality so that 
the ultimate value addition in the product which is being uh, given to the consumer is of highest quality. So the total quality management is being uh, taken but those are also being helped by that is possible today uh, by the help of the IT applications. Better decision making. Today organizations need to have better decision making. But decision making is one very important aspect in any organization if they want to really uh, achieve the objective to the organization and there also IT has played a very important role because the information are gathered, the processed and the output is given to the to the users for taking decisions which are more effective in an organ organization. The ergonomics so that is the movement of the person who are working in the organization how and in what way they should work for minimizing the time and getting the efficiency that is also being used to the use of IT. The business process re-engineering today we are doing is uh, that is for any organization to have a, a turnover I mean a turnaround rather for having a changed uh, bringing some change in the organization abrupt change in the organization we require to change the processes because the business process re-engineering is fundamental rethinking of the entire process of the organization and uh, this entire change in the process is can be really initiated by the use of IT in any organization today. The strategic alliance, the organizations, big organizations, they are having alliance with each other for uh, their mutual benefits and that alliance is, can be really implemented by the use of IT in a much better way. The e-commerce, as you know, that today we are doing business, we are doing uh, selling and purchase of commodities with the help of IT, the documents are being transferred online, the funds are being uh, given online. So there's a huge use of IT in the area of e-commerce. The people who are working in the organization, there are various office automation technologies which are being used like using the email or um, for that matter any other today's modern gadgets that you're using are being helped and used by the uh, implementation of IT. Now, if you look at uh, the information system in particular, let us first, first understand uh, what is information system. Uh, you know, in any organization, the management activity is done or implemented through taking various decisions. And any decision that is required to be taken requires information to be there because an information is analyzed and out of that with a particular knowledge level those informations are ultimately helps us or the helps the people to take various decisions an information system is defined as a set of interrelated components that collect or process store and distribute information to support decision making as you see here you know the information is available in an organization internally, the information are available on the externally. Now, an organization requires to have the information regarding the people, what are they doing at different levels of the organization, whether it is a strategic level or in the uh, tactical level or in the operational level. Similarly, an organization requires to have keep information about the external world, uh, about the competitors, about the consumers, about the customers, about the government policies, the economic policies, the culture of the country. Uh, the customers and so on and so forth and all these informations together can help the people at different levels of the organization to take various kinds of decision and those decisions are crucial for the organization to really achieve the organizational objectives as well for controlling the organization towards a uh, proper path so and the managers who are working in an organization if they don't get the information properly they are not in a position to analyze the problems they cannot uh, visualize the complex subjects and they cannot create new products because they are not in a position to take decisions and that's why there is a requirement of information flow in the organization and the right information must be available to the right people at the right time and that will help the people to go in the right direction the organization go in the right direction so there is an information flow is required and this flow is given a shape of a system. A system is that where there is input, where there is process and there is output. The information system will contain the information, receive the information, gather the information from the external as well as internal sources, 
depending upon the various users who are working in the organization uh, what are their requirements and then they will disseminate those information to people who are working in the organization so an information system is required to be made which will involve uh, gathering the information processing the information in a way as it is required by the users and ultimately to disseminate it to the people the right people at the right time for their proper decision making so you can see there are three activities in an information system number one there is input the input system input captures or collects the raw data from within the organization or from the surroundings as you have said earlier the people who are working in the organization they have so many information so they are uh, as well as the customers who are coming in the organization interacting with them there's a lot of information from the external world that information about the competitors the customers and the uh, economic environment the cultural environment or financial environment uh, legal environment and so many other information which are required to be input captured by the information system then those are to be processed it converts the raw data into more meaningful form the data is converted into an information the data by processing is converted into an information because an information when is converted can give us the knowledge and the knowledge in turn will help the managers to take various decisions but then that converting of data is to be made as per the requirement of the end user because different people may have different ways of interpreting a thing or uh, processing a thing to ultimately come to a conclusion so depending on the user's requirement then there is ways and means by which those can be can processed so the second activity in the information system is the processing and then there is output transfer this process information to the people or the activities where it will be used because this has been ultimately been made for the use of the end user so the output will be sent to the people who are in need of it and those are the three activities that you see in the information system there are various kinds of information system and it can be classified basically you can classify it in four major types number one the operational level system you know in an organization there are various levels the strategic level the tactical level and the operational level the operational level is the lowest level where people are actually working working on the day-to-day uh, -day transactions or dealing with the customers and it supports in an operational level system working the information which are required by those people supports the operational manager by keeping track of the elementary activities and transactions of the organization sales the receipts the depositing of the cash making the payroll the flow of material in the factory and the transaction processing system is there uh, I mean the various transactions which have been carried out in the organization, but then those requiring are requiring certain information. For example, if you go to a bank and if you give a check to be passed, the person concerned is sitting in the counter will require the information about your balance. So to complete the transaction, you will require certain information which is kept in the computer. So that is the operation level system. And the next is the knowledge level system. It is not as per the hierarchy of uh, in the organization, but then for any information that you get, and if you want to analyze it and ultimately come to a decision, you must know how to handle handle the data. You must have the knowledge about it. So the manager is supposed to have the knowledge, and the knowledge is in the form of information, maybe kept in a computer which they can see, they can understand, and they can really act upon the in information of the data to come to a particular decision. It supports the knowledge and data workers by helping them to integrate the new knowledge into business I mean knowledge is there you implement it you can implement it only when you are aware of that knowledge into the business and control the paperwork especially in the form of workstations and office systems so you are having workstations office systems in the form of the computers where you have got knowledge and you can implement it so uh, knowledge work and office automation system is a kind of knowledge level system which gives us certain knowledges which helps us to take our day-to-day uh, -day decision making or working. The management level system, this is more or less the, uh, the tactical level system, this is designed to serve the monitoring, controlling, decision making and administrative activities of the middle manager. The middle level managers, they are actually the tactical managers. They are following the instructions of the of the, their senior people to carry out certain things with the help of the operational level people so these are designed to serve the monitoring or controlling 
or even decision making uh, for day to day administrative activities and they can compare the current data with the data in the past and thus provide periodic reports. The manager wants to get some work done and to reflect over yes what has been done and how it has been done and how the next step can be taken he can go through the previous data see the trend understand the pattern and then accordingly he can have a decision for the future so management information system and decision support system are the two kinds of thing which are used by the management level people the management information system is required for managing the organization the information that is required as well as the when the managers want to take certain decision decision support system uh, helps the managers to take the decision by various tools. At the top of the organization there is strategic level system where the people are, the senior level people are there, they are talking about the, thinking about the strategic issues of the organization. Strategic issues that is those are of long term nature as well as the, uh, the, the council planning kind of thing that what is happening in the environment, how they should go about and what activities they should take, carry on so that they can really exist in the existing competitive environment. So this helps this uh, strategic level system, information system helps the senior managers in tracking and addressing the strategic issues to match, match the changes in the external environment because the environment is also changing very abruptly, continuously. So whenever there is some change in the environment, the strategic level people need to take a further decision which is very mm, possible only when the information about the external world is available to them. And that is uh, sometimes is also known as executive support system because these are the executives who are generally making the strategic decisions in an organization. Now another kind of information system is the geographical information system or GIS. GIS is a data visualization technology that captures, stores, checks, integrates, manipulates and displaced using digitized maps. So it can help the information to be visualized by uh, the user who is using the information because in it the most important characteristics is that every object is identified by a geographical, geographical location uh, connected to it. Say for example if you are working in an organization which is uh, existing in the entire globe so the organization to have a an understanding of the entire uh, enterprise if they can visualize as per the geographical location of the uh, various offices and the branches uh, placed over all over the world if it is given a visualized way things become much more better to understand and things become more clear it is just like say for example if you have a uh, have a map of India in front of us and you want to talk about the certain strategies, certain things that can point out at the different geographical, geographical locations and places and can discuss about something, it becomes much more easier. By integrating maps with spatially oriented and other database, users can generate data for planning, problem solving and decision making. So everything, every planning or the problem solving process or the decision making process is connected to the geographical location according to the business uh, existence, the business process. An example is that the location of branch offices you've got at various places of the country and the area serviced by each, served by each office is superimposed on a map that can reveal the overlapping areas and the areas that are not served in one picture. It might take hundreds of words to describe. For example, that is if you suppose you say that you have got 20 branches in this country and every branch has got certain territory which is to be administered by them. If one talks verbally that such and such branch is going to deal with such and such areas and so on and so with all the ten, 10 branches they are dealing with the different geographical areas if those are described verbally it is not possible for an individual to understand or even to visualize the entire process rather than that if it can be superimposed on a map and there will be two things number one the area, the place, the area and the office which is controlling it, the extent of the coverage of a particular office which is being seen in a map and all those 10 places, 10 branches can be seen there along with its connected territory, it becomes more easier to understand. So that geographical information system 
helps really for the decision makers to understand the things properly, they can visualize the things properly and then can, they can take a decision which becomes more far more effective. Now let us see a very very important uh, application of uh, IT that is electronic data interchange and electronic data interchange has immense application in business. EDI means the electronic data interchange as you know that whenever there is any business takes place there is a requirement of transference of documents, the agreements, terms and conditions and all that and earlier days in traditional days those documents or, or those terms and conditions or agreements are being sent through the uh, by mail by the with a hard copy of the letter and all that but then those things really takes more time as well as is very inefficient and it is mm, ineffective in many cases and EDI with the help of the networking technology the document business documents can be sent through the network and then and that's why the EDI is electronic exchange of business documents in a standard computer processable universally accepted format within the trading partners so there are the things that you can understand here when there are two trading partners there must be a common understanding about the format through which the the documents are to be sent and if there is a standard format acceptable to both the parties that can be sent to the computer it can be processed by the computer and the documents can be very easily and conveniently received by the people at different places you can see the understand the example of any business organization uh, immense number of uh, documents and uh, are being sent from one partner to the other partner from one business house to the other business house for their various kinds of requirements in EDI the computer applications of both the sender and receiver referred to as the trading partners yes there are two partners who are uh, corresponding with each other and they will agree upon a format the format uh, through the data will be sent because this will be understandable to both of them and that data file in a particular format is sent electronically through electronic message service so it has become it is different from the traditional emails of course where there is no particular format or file sharing over network it is not that it is the format that is being which is agreed upon understandable by the both the sides and those are being sent from one partner to the other partner for example if you can see that the banking industry the banks in our country the banks they're sending the documents in particular in the export business or in the import business there are letter of credit or any other agreement forms are being sent from the exporter and the importer of the in the two different countries and those documents are being sent electronically and it is basically an EDI electronic data interchange where there are various formats which is being agreed upon by the do the different countries and those formats are being followed are filled up by the respective banks in our country and the data is being sent to, through those formats to uh, the entire world. So this EDI is being applicable, is being, being applied uh, by the various organizations and which is of immense use. So data is exchanged in standard predefined format, it becomes possible to exchange business documents irrespective of the computerized business application at either end of the combination because there is an agreed format which is understandable to both the sides. An example can be given that the supplier's accounts receivable application. Supplier's account is there. The receivable application for raising an invoice could still be implemented on a file system using COBOL, while the customer's accounts payable may be based on RDBMS such as Oracle. So, the, although there are two different technologies, one side there is COBOL, other side there is RDBMS as Oracle. But since the format they are using are the same format which is agreed upon by both the sides, the data can be very easily transferred and can be understood and acted upon by the people at the both the sides. Well if we look in look back and we see that uh, try to see what are the different problems in the traditional business. The information the traditional paper based business communication 
created a number of problems which has been reduced today by the electronic data interchange or EDI and those problems if you reflect upon can be understood number one things used to take more time there is increased time say for example in a in a whenever we want to send some data or certain information to our suppliers or to the uh, to our distributors or even to the consumers sometimes which is a customer sometimes at a distance then earlier days it was difficult because things are being sent through mail and that mail used to take more time but then today uh, because of the implementation of PDI the time has been reduced to a high extent large extent there is high accuracy in the data being sent because this has been done electronically and all kinds of checking and everything is possible so accuracy of the business was not there in case of the traditional business it is highly inaccurate because it is being done manually the people are involved in doing the manual works and therefore that uh, asked for more high labor charges for a very small work which can be done by computer within minutes people um, could have charged more than uh, a very uh, large amount of time they used to devote or use for it which has become very expensive for the organization in the early days and as you know that in case of the manual working sense of the question of inaccuracy or there is mistake which is crept in, in the work there is increased uncertainty about the correctness or the, uh, the efficiency of the work which is being done now since today the, with the implementation of EDI we are using the standard electronic message formats this, uh, these formats are various formats are being used by the different organizations and it consists of standardized electronic message formats for common business documents uh, as I was talking about earlier that our business our banking industry using the electronic uh, EDI electronic data interchange for sending the documents all over the world and they are doing it through a particular network which is known as SWIFT and through the SWIFT network they are sending the um, data but then they are for different kinds of applications of the documents in various formats there were more than 200 uh, formats are there which was prescribed format acceptable but all the members are using the SWIFT, SWIFT uh, all over the world uh, the, for example there may be various business documents like request for quotations when there is a quotation is to be sent there is a particular format is there which is accepted by both the sides and those only will be exchanged between the parties the purchase order similarly could have is a, uh, there is a format for that by which the orders will be placed the purchase order if there is a modification a change is required there is a particular format in that the bill of lading and receiving and why bill of lading is whenever you are sending some goods through uh, the ship the document that is given as a proof of the goods is known as the bill of lading like when you get transport receipt or the airways bill like that when you are exporting goods and sending it through the ship uh, the bill of lading is issued. So, bill of lading is a document for which there is a particular format, and then when the goods are received by the people in the other part of the country or the, in the, some other country, the receiving advice received by them is again sent to a particular format, which is understandable to both. The bills, the invoice that is being sent along with it is a particular format. This sets enable the computers in you know, one organization to communicate with the other without the need for actually producing paper documents. There is no need for paper document, but the format is there and the data is being sent very uh, convenient to the other, other side of the uh, business. If we look at the architecture for EDI, the essential elements of EDI, the use of an electronic transmission medium. Yes, in EDI we require electronic transmission medium. We send the data through the electronic medium. There is the use of structure of the formatted managed message based on agreed standards. So there is a particular format. It has got relatively faster delivery of electronic documents from sender to receiver. Yes, there is much more faster. The electronic documents are uh, being sent quickly. There is direct communication between applications. There is no via media. There is no intermediary. It is only through the network directly. It is going to the uh, other partner. But then this EDA depends on more or less sophisticated information technology infrastructure. Because if you want to really do this, you require the electronic transmission medium. You must have 
uh, the, the communication infrastructure which is required available to you for example you will require servers you will require network or will require various computer devices so that you can really implement the ZDI this must include data processing system should be there data management should be there and you will need to keep those data which is being sent in your database and the networking capability the network system should be there and sometimes it is maybe possible that an organization do not have those infrastructure and they can really take the help of some network service provider like as you see even in using the computer and using the internet you require some ISP or internet service provider it's a third party network service provider so an organization can also have a dependence on the third party network service provider in this respect There are certain EDI standards if you really implement EDI, it becomes possible from sending one data data from one place to the other place. And for that, we require to extract data from the business application from which it is being sent, transforming it into standard format as we have said earlier, and which is widely accepted by everyone. These EDI standards are basically data standards, the format standards, in that they lay down the syntax and semantics of the data which is being exchanged. Different industries may have their own EDI standards as agreed upon and different countries may have got their own industry standards. But then when two partners are uh, transacting business with each, each other, that must be, they must agree upon the formats of the standards. The Committee of American National Standard Institute has developed a standard for use by all American business, which is known as ANSI X or X.12 standard. The EDIFACT is an institution in EDI for administration, commerce and transport of UN. It was announced in 1987, which, uh, which gives guidelines for the uh, international trades to be followed by the members. Any fact activity is undertaken by two international organizations. The ISO, the International Standard Organization, is responsible for developing the syntax rules of the formats and the data dictionary, where the United Nations Economic Commission is the other agency which is concerned with the use and promotion and standardization of any fact message. These are, in fact, the standards which are being followed by the different countries as for the directives and understanding given by the United, St uh, the United Nations or the other uh, organizations like United Nations Economic Commission. India is also a member of the Asia EDIFACT. The EDIFACT has got, uh, I mean, the six EDIFACT boards are there and different countries are there in different EDIFACT boards. India is the member of the EDIFACT board Asia and where there is Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, China, Singapore, Taiwan, Malaysia, so they have got certain agreed upon standards. The EDI benefits, if you can see that it is a convenient exchange of business documents, even in the non-business hours. The business transaction cost is reduced drastically. The information float is reduced. Customer service is improved. There is faster inventory replenishment without any uh, blockage of inventory. There is reduced safety stock is reduced because there is a high communication uh, uh, transparency between the supplier and the producer. There is advanced notification of shortage, cuts, and substitutions. So there are enormous benefits of EDI which you can see from this. There is more reliable forecasting at both supplier and vendor ends because they have got more information, proper quick information. There is improved shipping and receiving and cargo tracking is there. There is quick, accurate, and automatic reconciliation of documents through IT. There is opportunity to negotiate better discounts and payment terms more quickly. There is improved cash flow management, the more efficient data flow at both intra and intercompany levels. There is more productive trading partner relationship because there is more high communication with each other and transparency. Uh, there is stronger bottom line. The organization stands on a very strong feet uh, to really run the organization effectively. So we can summarize this information, these things what they have learned in this lesson. Today's business environment is so competitive that in order to strive, when required to evolve, and therefore evolving, and in this changing business environment, require more and more information. This information system allows the different functionaries at the different levels to take the proper decision making so that the organization can really go ahead. Information system has components of input, the processing and the output data is taken as an input, it is processed in the way it needs to be used by the user and then the output and this information is required at every level of management. The geographical information system or GIS has identified every object of information uh, connected with the geographical location which gives a better visualization to the people who are really using the, uh, uh, the information system for taking decisions. 
EDI is Electronic Exchange of Business Documents, which is today we are doing through the use of network, which earlier we are doing through the traditional standards, and for that there are certain formats which are to be followed, agreed upon by the two partners in both the sides of the business. Thank you very much.